the second thing that we want to talk about is around customer mismatches. And this one's, I think this one should be clear, but it may not be entirely clear is, you know, when you start your business, you learn where you need to be, um, who buys your stuff. And then, and the more you sell, the more spread out your customer gets. What you have to do is try and figure out who your client is or who your customer is and stay with that group. So I pointed this out a few times. Like I think when, especially when you're a premium price product, but you're not the premium product. So if you're in between, you know, if you think of the good, better, best strategy and you are not the best and you're in the better and you're not good. So you're in the better area. Your problem is, is when you start getting into tougher times, people will gravitate to best and good because good is good enough. And then I need the best because I'm doing something that requires the best, but nobody ever goes, I'd like to spend a little bit more money on better in those situations. Right. And so a really great example is if you take someone like me, I will buy better at a, um, you know, it's, it's kind of well-known on this podcast. I, I buy stuff at, I shop at Longos. I have a local Longos. I love very much. Right. And I go there and I buy better. Right. But I am a me and, and kind of like anyone in that kind of uh, middle class range um, that likes kind of premium, you know, better products. We're also fair weather, better buyers, right? Is so when, when the pressure comes on and the dollars need to get spent properly, I will drop back to good. And so when I mean customer mismatch, I mean, are you in one of those banners where you have potential consumers who are going to drop better at the sign of trouble and go back to good. I totally agree with you. I think the problem with a lot of people, even a lot of people we've talked to and a lot of people I see on a daily basis, mm -hmm. people I work with, et cetera, is, is, is the middle ground will be the struggle. Mm -hmm. it, and it, I don't care what commodity you're in. It's harder in CPG because the movement is so fast. Like we talked this morning, people who have lots of money today, will have lots of money next month mm -hmm. and they'll have lots of money next year. Mm -hmm. The person buying the Ferrari last week is the same guy buying the Ferrari, or the same gal buying the Ferrari in the new year. Th those people are going to have money. The rest of us have to start making different choices. So, you know, I'm not going to give up on certain categories. Like I'm not going to buy shitty pasta, no matter how expensive pasta gets. I have brands that I will go to and I know the guys that the marginal difference when things are okay feels large when things get tight that marginal play becomes a little less and maybe mm -hmm. now you know what the guy who wasn't as good is all of a sudden not as bad as i thought he was going to be mm -hmm. i can play i can move in spots and then there's other spots where it was really when things were flush i'm happy to spend a little more on that particular product when things get tougher i'm going back down to just good I'm I'm like you. I mean, I mean, and I, and I think the the challenge with a lot of small players is you might be premium in your particular niche, but the niche, unless it's the niche, a high end niche in superstore, a high end niche in Walmart is is not going to work long term because those players are not there. Like your Longos example, like you'll you'll buy that really nice chocolate bar. Until the Longos brand or a lesser brand that's still good, all of a sudden doesn't look as bad as it did last week, right? Because you can well, stretch it a little longer yeah. and you'll still do something else. Though. But that means doesn't mean you're not going to buy. You're still buying the most expensive pasta on the street. But I can't buy everything expensive anymore. Something's got to give. I don't want to be in the category that's the give. You, you have to be aware too is that is something that the retailer is doing. Every retailer, right? So we're picking on Longos a little bit, but... Not really, but Longos in particular has been very clever with this. They have their own house brand called Curato, but they have made it so that the the branding on this thing, it's like the President's Choice Black Label, right? Like it is a premium looking product. And so pasta is a very good category where I might say, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to do Kenny level pasta. So I'm going to go and buy the most expensive pasta because I got to do 
this dish I got at Kenny's house. If you ever get the chance to have pastas at Kenny's house, you should. Just so you know, like um, I, the unfortunate part, I spend like six to eight bucks on a 500 gram yeah. pot. So, pot so pasta. here's the thing though, right? Is when it comes time, you know, like I still got, I got kids to feed, right? So I'm going to drop back and not buy the most expensive. But if I buy the house brand Curato, it's not only cheaper, but the branding is something that I can make myself feel good that I still bought something that I think right. might be premium positioned, even right. if it's not, right? And so that is another threat to the brand, right? Is if you are a better category, you got to watch those house brands because they're going to come up and eat your lunch and have a better sell proposition for the consumer. So you just got to watch those because all of that threatens what you're able to do. Because now all of a sudden you have a commitment to a retailer that, isn't going to have consumers that match your proposition anymore. They're going to go away and right. buy something else. And right. then you got a problem, right? Because you banked on those volumes to get you your volume deals, you know, the things you want to do, the volumes you want to get from them, you know, and Longos is going to say to you, hey, listen, like I got all this stuff of yours here and nobody's buying it, right? So you, you got problems, right? So yeah. Well, and it could even switch within a brand. Mm -hmm. Like you and I were ch again chatting this morning before we got on is that, like I'll look at, let's say, cause you know, I have a small retail store, right? So I've got a peanut butter set and I carry 500 and I carry one kg and I carry two kg and I carry organic and organic. Now I look at that set and say, okay, if times get tough, maybe all the middle needs to go. So you know what I'll do is the two kg, I'll run a little leaner, but that gives the families a chance to save some pennies yep. and maybe the 500 gram I'll try to make a little more margin here and there, but really I can, I can price point that. So people can't afford to really pay the two kg. That's where they go. Maybe the one kg is just useless at this point for me. So maybe I'm just going to drop half a third of my skew offerings in that middle size because it just, it doesn't make any sense at this particular point now. And I might even do it this way and say, okay, why well, carry crunchy and smooth salted, unsalted, I'll look at the rankings, maybe crunchy, salted, and unsalted, smooth sort of rank. Then you know what? I won't bring the other ones in. Mm -hmm. Or I'll bring it in maybe just in the 500s, but definitively not in the 2kg and the 1kg I've already gotten rid of anyway. Right? Because the skew rat's coming, like even within categories. Never mind the fact that I'm, yeah, I'm looking at other categories. Say, okay, I got seven granolas. Okay, really, what do I need? Well, I probably need just a really good high quality granola and I'll use new world and that's a price point. And maybe now I'll do granola girl, I'll do granola king, or I'll do something mm -hmm. like, but I'll maybe keep my nature's path skews because I like that brand and I can do stuff, but I might have to get rid of, I might have to get rid of the Jordans. I may have to get rid of Dorset. I don't know what it is, but you start walking, you know, so, but if you're those other brands, because again, you're playing in funny spots, like. Yeah, it's you know I'm gonna do a lot of thinking in the next next couple of months, buddy. You know, someone's gonna pay for it. 